selling your stuff <laughs> yeah you're going you're going down the toilet and I did one simple concept I said Lord I give up doing it my way and that is one of the biggest stumbling blocks I see in the church they don't know who they are and they're going to do it their way I don't know who I am I'm going to do it my way so I know people who got saved and they stopped smoking in one day and they did this and, and no, I, I still went out and smoked dope for about another month. But it, it waned until it was done. Now, did I give up the first time I fell? The second? The third? No, I kept getting up because I could not go back to that old life. I could not go back to that because that scared the living daylights out of me. Because I was on the verge of having to make some decisions to maintain everything that I just couldn't do. So wherever you're at, when do you stop believing? Never. Now, I'm going to go over some scriptures today about speaking to the mountain and your authority and some things that keep us from walking in it. But I taught not too long ago about when Jesus said, Oh, ye of little faith, sometimes he meant you had little faith. Other times that word meant your faith was of short duration. In other words, well, man, Jesus, we believe you. We're trusting you. And something happens and they go, Oh, crud. And they say, Save me, save me, save me. And he says, Oh, you of little faith. That means your faith was duration was short. It didn't mean volume. Now, a couple of scriptures I'm going to touch on today, it does mean volume. And he says, oh, ye of little faith. You either had no faith or it was paquita. But he's going to tell you something. So when you're standing in faith, the Apostle Paul says, and doing all, you do what? Stand. stand. Keep on standing. So Amen. if I'm believing for health, if I'm believing for restoration, if, you know, whatever it is I'm believing... It's not based on what I see. It's based on what I know. And my knowing is all about Him. Amen. My bank account might say something different. The scale might say something different. My wife might say something. No. My wife is always positive. You know, everything might say something different. But for me, in my mouth, I have to say, Lord, I thank you. You're taking care of me. You're taking me through this. I've got it. We've got it. We've got it. I was at a Camp Copeland convention. And uh, I think it was me and Heather and her nephew and his wife. And we were staying down in Anaheim. And uh, all of a sudden, I got a pain in my chest. And I thought I was going to die. I mean, I was laying on the bed, I was laying on the floor, I was doing jumping jacks, I went and took a hot shower, and this pain would not go away. It was just excruciating pain. 
after an hour or two it subsided and phew, man, wow, the enemy attacked me. And then we went and had dinner and oh dear God, it happened again. So when we got back into town, I went and saw my local doctor. He did a sonogram on my chest. He says, yeah, you got a gold water stone about the size of the end of your finger. And it's right, it's pushing up against the, the tube. And he says, the only way you can fix that is surgery. I says, there's no other remedy than cut me up. He says, you better just make an appointment right now. Because if it goes into the tube, you're gonna, you're gonna have to have surgery. And I'm going, okay. So I talked to Heather and, and you know, I am not a big fan of surgery. Hey, would you cut me open now? You know, doctors are wonderful. I love them. But in this case, not so much. So we happened to be going to a service at Tom Barkey's church in Anaheim. Now I know Tom Barkey, Pastor Barkey is a man of faith. He believes in healing. And so at the end of the service, I just went up to him and I explained what was going on. I says, I just want you to agree with me that this stone just dissolves and goes away. He put his hand on my chest. He prayed over me. And guess what never happened? No surgery and never had any symptoms of the, God. the stone. Come on. Praise God. Glory. Praise God. Doc, my doctor said, that's impossible. So, did another sonogram. Come on. There, there's nothing there. I, I don't know. So, I tell you this to say, you cannot go by what you see or what you feel. Once you've made your declaration that I'm believing for this, I don't care if the whole house falls on you. You say, I thank you, Lord. This is, I'm getting this. Come on. Now, if the Lord tells you, I want you to go to the doctor and do something because your faith is nowhere near, this ain't going to work for you, then you go to the doctor. And I'm not saying don't go to the doctor, but I'm saying if you're going to stand in faith for something, stand for it and don't be wishy-washy. And we're going to talk about that today. Speak to the mountain. What in the world does that mean? Well, I will tell you. Because that's my job. Okay. You guys have to smile at me because I'm very sensitive and my, I'm, I'm very fragile. So if you look at me like, what you talking, Willard? That'll just throw me off. And I'll start looking at Heather and I'll say, could you come up and finish? I'm scared. Uh, Forty years old, crack addict, living in a rat-infested house, little apartment in San Bernardino. Look where I'm at today. It don't matter where you're at today. It matters what you're believing. Because it will all change. Speak to the mountain. What in the world is God talking about? Well, let's look at it. We're going we're gonna to go over... Mike, we only have 12 slides today in case you were interested. <laughs> Matthew 8, 23 to 27. This is the complete Jewish Bible. I don't know. I just kind of like it sometimes. He, Jesus, boarded the boat. And his whatever guys, his followers, his disciples followed. Then without warning, a furious, a furious storm arose on the lake so that waves were sweeping over the boat. Have you ever been about the ocean? It's a little nerve-wracking when you get out there far enough where you can't see land. And as far as that way is ocean, as far as this way is ocean. And then the, the swells start coming. I'm in a 100-foot fishing boat, and we're off the coast of Mexico. And a tornado, a hurricane is coming up from South America. And they said, well, we're going to head back to San Diego. And as we're going, the swells got bigger and bigger. So I'm at the front of the boat, and we're like, and then we go down and when we were down I looked and there was a body of water 40 feet around me we were 40 feet below the surface of the water in the bottom of that swell and I had an epiphany I said I am but an ant in this universe I am Paquita and that is what we did for the next six hours I think we traveled 500 miles, but we were only 80 miles away from San Diego because we were, we were doing this. But you cannot go by the storm. So this storm rose, and waves were sweeping over the boat. But Jesus was sleeping. 
So they, the apostles, came and roused him and said, Sir, help us, we're about to die. And he said to them, I'm here, do not be afraid. No, he said, why are you afraid? Why are you afraid if Jesus is in your boat? I'm going to break this down a little bit. Why are you afraid? So little trust you have. Then he got up and he rebuked the winds and the, and the waves. And there was a dead calm. The men were astonished and they asked, What kind of man is this that even the winds and the sea obey him? Now this is Matthew 8. This is earlier in their ministry. And when they saw Jesus perform a miracle, they were like, Who is this dude? So they had no concept of his authority. And that is a lot of Christians. You have no concept of your authority in Christ. Right. So now there's metaphors here. Boat. When you have, if you're interpreting dreams and you dream you're in a boat, what does the boat represent? Your ministry, your life. Your life, your ministry, right? Who is in the boat? Jesus. Jesus. If Jesus is in your boat, in your life, why are you afraid of anything? Because you don't understand who you are in Christ. Or who he is. Or who he is in your life. It's all about a revelation of who you are and who he is. Amen. I will separate you in a second. Both of you. I'll make one sit in the corner. I got two girls gabbing like high school kids over here. My goodness. Only for the ones I like. I, I pick on Ray, but she told me she's going to punch me the next time I do it, so I just backed off. <laughs> Janet caught me outside church. She said, would you leave my daughter alone? And I go, oh, my gosh. Who am I going to pick on? Mike, are you up to it today? <laughs> Mike says he can handle it. So if Jesus is in the boat with you, why are you afraid? If you're out there living life on your own, you don't have a relationship with God, yeah. you should be scared. Yeah. So when he told the parable of the house, he says, when you build your house upon Christ, the storm will come and it won't destroy. But if you build your life upon a bunch of little rocks, sand, like I'm good, I work hard, all that kind of stuff, it says that house will be destroyed. So I have one foundation in my life. I'm born again. That's it. That is my foundation. Everything else is secondary. I am born again, and I have to understand what that means and what that means to me. So let's look at a couple of key phrases here, what Jesus did. Because what Jesus did, what? I can do. Why are you afraid? Amen. Fearful. It comes from the word dread. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been overcome with fear so much that you just shake and you can't move? Yeah, it usually involved dogs trying to eat me as a kid. <laughs> You know, I got bit really bad on my leg as a as a kid, and so every time I see a dog and he's showing me his teeth, I'm going, ah! <laughs> So it was afraid. Why are you afraid? When the angel shows up and talks to Mary, he says what? Do not be afraid. When he shows up and talks to uh, Elizabeth's husband, he says, do not be afraid. God always, whenever the angel shows up, they always say, do not be afraid. And yet, so many of us walk this life of fear, 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 fear. Because you know what song's playing in your head? What about, what about, what about, what about, what about, what about, what about? And we do the what about dance, right? Joy came, my favorite person in the world. I said, Joy, I see that squirrel. He's running in that cage. He's singing the what about, what about, what about. She was like, no, he won't stop. I love her. So you have to have your identity in Christ bigger than whatever it is the world is throwing at you. So he said, so little trust you have. It's a noun. So it wasn't an action. It was their position. They were unbelieving. This is new in their ministry. They're very early in the ministry. So they really hadn't built a trust in God or trust in Jesus. Now he rebuked. And I, I got schooled on this one. I, I had family members who grew up in the Pentecostal churches, different branches of it, and my family was one that was really, 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 really like 1950s, and if, you, if I say that, you know what I'm talking about. And uh, 
they screamed and hollered about everything. And if you weren't running around the sanctuary screaming and hollering, nothing was happening. And so I just really got a, a bad taste in my mouth when I see that in Christian because I came from a church we all looked like we were at a funeral. What a mighty God we serve. It's like, wow, dang, woo, hallelujah. So, and so when we're doing the deliverances, there are people out there who scream and holler at the demons and they holler at the devil. I said, I don't think Jesus, I think he spoke the word. But here, I saw they used the word, the word rebuke and it's 26 times in the Bible. It's a sharp correction. It's sharp. It's hard. It's So it's not just, okay, in the name of Jesus, all you bad demons leave my house. Yes. No, in the name of Jesus, get out of my house. You are speaking with authority and passion. And so I got schooled on this, so I learned a little bit. And they said, what kind of man is this? They've never seen a man walk in authority. How many demons had been cast out before Jesus showed up? Zero. Crystals in the back going zero. None. None. So Jesus shows up, and when he came after getting the transfiguration, he got he got his anointing right. He went right into the next town, cast out demons, and healed people. And they're all going, we have never seen this. Who is this guy? And so they were astounded. So they had no foundation on like, well, that, I saw Brother So-and-so do it. They've never seen anybody do it, so this was all new to them. And so they had never seen a man walk in authority. I'm going to tie it all together at the end, so just be patient with me. In Matthew 17, later on in the ministry, towards the end of it, and they said, uh, a man came to Jesus and said, Sir, have mercy on my son because he is an epileptic. 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 <laughs> Somebody crap. Come on. Come on, Rich. Correct me. Say it. Epileptic. Thank you. That word. <laughs> which is all, it's actually a healing, a sickness. It's not a spiritual word. So when the man came, he thought his son was sick, and it was a natural thing. And he says, my son has such terrible fits, and he often falls into the fire or into the water. Another translation says he throws himself into the fire or the water. I brought him to your apostles or your disciples, and they couldn't heal him. That word heal is a sickness word. It's not spiritual. So in his mind, his son has a illness. illness. Uh -huh. Jesus answered. I like this. Jesus is such a kumbaya, not... He looks at him, and what does he say? Oh, you poor little kids, I'll help you. He says, you perverted people without any trust. How long will I be with you? How long must I put up with you? Bring him here to me. Jesus rebuked the demon, and it came out of him, so that from that moment on, the boy was healed. So was that a sickness? Or was it the byproduct of a demonic influence? Demon. demon. It's the demon was the root. So many of the things I see people dealing with, especially like autoimmune diseases, that's demonic. It's demonic, it's demonic, it's demonic. But if you don't know it, you just freak out. I had four heart attacks with my lovely wife. I know she was going, Lord, can I trade him back in for one that's not broken? And uh, I, <laughs> the first two the first two heart attacks happened in one day when I was in the gym trying to get, get in shape. I use that as an excuse never to go back to the gym. See, the gym almost killed me. <laughs> but in the middle of the second heart attack, this is what Heather and I said, this is not unto death. She was right there from the beginning. Right in the beginning, she says, this is not unto death. Heard it. Heard it you know, and I'm the one over here going, man, my wrist hurts. You know, as the blood pressure had just went skyrocket. So 
we, we drove to the doctor's office and he took my blood pressure. It was like 210, 220 over like 150 or something. And he goes, you're having a heart attack right now. I said, wow, that's exciting. So they gave me the little nitroglycerin. And I thought, that's going to blow up in my mouth. Anyway, after that, I had two more. So the heart attack thing was kind of in my psyche, even though we were confessing I was healing. So one day, I'm sitting in the chair. I think Heather had went up to bed, and I was watching TV, and all of a sudden, my heart rate starts going up. And I'm going, no. And I got a little Fitbit, so I got my little blood pressure See the nose running evil. And I got my blood pressure thing, and I, I took my blood pressure, and it was went up to 150. I waited a little bit longer, and I did again. It was up to 160, and I'm going, no, 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 no. This ain't happening. The last time I did was 170 over 110 or something. I called Heather, and I says, Heather, I'm under attack. Could you come down and pray with me? She came down, prayed with me, and right back into 130 over 80 or 138 or whatever it is. That was a demonic attack. And I felt the fear trying to come on me. I felt my the fear just starting to, you know, accelerate in me. But I never gave in and said, oh my gosh, call the doctor. We're having a heart attack. I said, no, 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 no. This, this is not. I have a new heart. There's nothing wrong with me. You have to know that you know that you know whatever you're standing on. You Amen. do. Amen. You cannot go by Amen. what you see. Come on. Amen. You cannot go by circumstances. Praise God. So, sometimes our healing is involved with the demonic. An epileptic. Now, I looked at that word, that Greek word, and it literally means to be moonstruck or a lunatic. Now, moonstruck is they thought you were out under a full moon. Well, that is all demonic. That's spiritual. So, in the word epileptic. Epileptic. Blah, blah, blah. blah is literally it's tied to a demonic when Abraham was told to come out of his country who did he worship moon. he was a moon worshiper who's the god of war Mars see the, the, they, they give they give demigods you know the, 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 the different planets and so moon was definitely a demonic thing so even in the word it meant moonstruck or somebody who was under the uh, demonic influence. The word I couldn't heal means uh, cure, restore to health. The word perverted means to distort. The generation distorted everything. Or they turned aside. You know, I followed Jesus and then things didn't work. So I, I now, now I'm a, a Buddhist or I'm a, a tree worshiper or something. I have conversations with Christians, you know, I pray for my sister and she died of cancer, so God's not real, so I'm going to go, you know, be an atheist. Am I responsible for what you believe? Am I responsible for your walk? My job is to encourage you, pray for you, and feed you the truth. What you do with it is your business. And you frustrate the living daylights out of me sometimes. Like I'm sure I frustrate a lot of other people. Because you're always saying, get it, get it, don't you get it, don't you get it, get it. And then the Lord, when I get angry, the Lord always says, how long did it take you? Uh, 450 years. Okay, shut up. So now I've, I really turned the corner in the last couple of years, especially the last year, where I have compassion for anybody wherever they're at. Good. Because that's your walk, not my walk. Not everybody walks the same speed. When we go, when we go out, Heather, like she's off to the races, and I'm going like, "Why are you walking ten feet in front of me?" She goes, "I'm just walking normal." I'm going, "Okay, see you later." <laughs> Without any trust, that was an adjective. So it was describing somebody who was unfaithful or was faithless. And then he rebuked the demon. That means to abolish or charge, to, to charge sharply. And to heal, that was means to restore to health. So that breakdown was Jesus spoke to the situation, right? 
Did they lay hands on anybody? Did they pour oil on them? Did anybody confess their sins in that story? Then the apostles came to him privately and said, why couldn't we drive it out? And he said to them, because you have such little trust. Yes, I tell you that if you had trust as tiny as a mustard seed, you would be able to say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it would move. Indeed, nothing would be impossible to you. I want everybody to read that last in purple. Nothing, nothing will, will be, be impossible, impossible to us. Nothing will be impossible to us. What is the qualifier? Have faith. I need to have faith as small as a mustard seed. So now they've thrown in rebuking things. They've thrown in trust. But now they said your faith has to be at least the size of a mustard seed. So let's, let's look and see what God is talking to us about. Such little trust, that's a noun, without faith or unbelief. A tiny mustard seed. Have you ever seen a mustard seed? It's smaller than a grain of rice. It's really small, 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 right? And then he says you'd be able to speak. You'd be able to say, all the power in the kingdom of God is your belief and what you say. If negativity is constantly coming out of your mouth, and I was guilty of that, you're not going to get anything. Hmm. Yeah, but Larry, you don't understand the bank account, this, that, this, that, this, that. Okay, is that going to change anything? Double-minded. I used to come home from work and just vomit all over Heather Lewis. I can't believe it. This person did this, and this person did this, and this lady said this to us, and it was all negative. So I had to do a paradigm shift of my thinking. Somebody comes in, they're angry. You know, I say, okay, how do we fix this problem? Did we do something wrong? Are you just a crazy person? You know, I am not going to get drawn into some negative thing in my life. So at the end of the day, I go, wow, Heather, we had another great day. Now, maybe there were some challenges in my day, but I don't bring it to her. Because why do I need to bring my issue and dump it all over her? Right now, when we started the driving school, we were co-workers at the driving school but mm -hmm. the Lord said that I need to take it over so she can go into full time ministry and so I pretty much run the school unless you know they're, we're in trouble and I go Heather and she shows up with her Wonder Woman outfit on <laughs> there's still a, issues with me because I love to say things that embarrass my wife I don't know why there, there's still something jacked up in me but <laughs> Love you. So I need to speak it. And see where it says nothing will be impossible. Look at what that word means. I will never not have strength. I will never not have power. I will never not have a, a ability. Or I will never be too weak. Amen. That means if I'm walking in faith, I will have all the power and authority that I need to do whatever I need to do. You want a blanket, Janet? Hallelujah. I got blankies. Okay. There's three different colors. We, we wash them every six months. <laughs> Did everybody get the last part? Nothing. Nothing will be impossible to me. I'll never lack power or authority to do what I need to do. How many of you are lying right now to yourself? Go, well, I, I, I don't believe that. Anybody doing that? Nobody, everybody look down at their shoes. Okay. In Luke 17, 6, the Lord replied, If you had trust as, a tiny, as tiny as a mustard seed, you could say to this fig tree, Be uprooted and replanted in the sea, and it would obey you. So now we're using this mustard seed again, but he's talking about a fig tree. Early, he talked about a mountain. If we had faith, we could speak to the mountain. So, whenever they use the word mountain, Paul, the Apostle Paul, describes it. He gives us the answer to the mountain question. He says, we're not coming to the mountain with lightning 
and thunder and fire. That was Mount Sinai where Moses got the law. He says we're coming to Zion where Christ was crucified. Okay? Fig tree. Jesus is walking along with his, his disciples. He's heading into Jerusalem and he's hungry and he sees a fig tree and he goes to the fig tree and there's no fruit on it. He curses it and it shriveled up and died. Fig tree and mountain both have to do. Mountain is Mount Sinai and the law. The fig tree is Israel and all the customs of the law. So both times he says if you had faith of a mustard seed, you could tell the fig tree to get out of your life. You could tell the mountain to get out of your life. That's talking about the law or being under condemnation or works. That is one of the biggest stumbling blocks Christians have is they still think they're qualified. They still think they're disqualified. They still think that God is looking at them in a good or bad or negative connotation. Now, I'm sure that we can find some other stuff for those words. Just go read the comments afterwards. Heather writes the, the true stuff down there. So he's saying, which mountain are we coming to? Which mountain am I going to operate from? Am I going to operate from the mountain of law or the mountain of the cross? We're the mountain of the cross. When Jesus was all done, he said what? It is finished. It's almost done. You guys finish finished. up the rest. It is finished. It's finished. He said it's done. Mm -hmm. What was his ministry? His ministry was to reconcile mankind back to God. Did he do that? Yes. yes. So how do I access it? I just believe. I believe and I speak and I'm born again. Amen. There's no qualifiers to get saved other than, other than I believe. We're going to take communion right now and I want to celebrate which mountain are you operating from. Are you, are you operating from the mountain where I'm good or bad, I'm in and out, I I've got sin, I have to repent every day. Or are you operating from the mountain that says, Jesus made me perfect, and now I'm learning how to walk out that perfection. Yeah. The only ritual that we have in Christendom is communion. Yeah. The washing the feet was Old Testament. It has things. The water baptism was Old Testament. John the Baptist says, I baptize you in water, but there's one coming who will baptize you in what? Spirit. Holy Spirit. Fire and the Holy Spirit. Woo! So did you get saved because you got dipped, or did you get saved because you got blown away by the Spirit? It's the Holy Spirit. Water baptism is a, is a outward stay of faith, and if you want to do it, do it. But it doesn't change you. Being baptized in the Holy Spirit changes you. So when we take communion, are we celebrating what we did or what Jesus did? What Jesus did. So when we take the bread, it's his body that was broken for us. What does that mean? I need to go to the prophet Isaiah. He breaks it down in 53 or 54. Which one is it? 53. 53. And he goes and he says exactly what she tells me this every time. Do you love me for my brain or my personality? Or my boyish good looks. So the broken body, there's restoration in your mind, your finances, your family, physical healing. Everything that you need in the natural realm was done through whatever happened to him in his physical body. The blood was to make you spiritually clean. The broken body was for all the stuff that we need in the natural realm. So do I break the bread anymore? I don't. I got a revelation from Heather. Heather said when Jesus came out of the grave, was he broken? No, he was perfect. So I'm going to eat Jesus' per I'm going to take his perfection into my life. I don't know why I do it, Heather. I apologize. Pray after. <laughs> Who was saved when they had communion, the first communion? No. 
Randy have to save? No. <laughs> it was before the cross. They weren't saved. They were unsaved people. How many people, how many saved people did Jesus heal? None. How many sinners did he heal? All of them. I get ministers go, well, God ain't going to heal you if you got sin in your life. And I go, yeah, stupid. This is, he's doing communion before the cross. Right. So none of them were saved. Okay. So you can go to a church, they say, well, only saved people can partake in communion. Or you have to be worthy. Man, you, the church we went, we always had to take a minute and say, I want you to examine yourself to see if you're worthy. Yeah. What? I always found boo-boos and things wrong. Paul was talking about the church in Corinth who was having a party, getting drunk, eating all the food. He says, are you taking this in a manner worthy? Are you honoring what Jesus did when you take communion? That's what he was talking about. It's not about you being worthy. God has already made you worthy through Jesus. So he took the bread and he broke it and says, this is my body broken for you. But Jesus came out of the grave perfect. So I eat the bread saying, Lord, I'm taking Jesus' perfection. His totally healed, totally set free. I'm taking it into my life right now. And I do it by faith in Jesus' name. Are there things in my life that are still out of alignment? Why are you laughing? You're laughing. Really, a child. Are there things in my life that are still out of whack? Do I then give up? No way. I say no. God's going to show me how to get through whatever is left. I am an overcomer in Christ. I can do all things in Christ because He strengthens me. I have all authority in heaven and earth because I'm operating from Mount Zion instead of Sinai. I went to a church that believed that you're, you weren't saved or you weren't forgiven until you confessed everything. Do you know everything you've ever done wrong? What if you miss something? What if you get to heaven and he brings up something you did when you were eight and you go, oh, snap, I forgot about that. Do you realize how ludicrous the whole theology of confessing all your sins? Or you're in Christ, you're out of Christ, we're in, we're out, we're in, we're out. How can you do that? That's impossible. The old Larry died and was buried. The old spirit is separated from me. I'm a new creation in Christ. The life I live, I live hidden in Christ. And Christ lives in me, the hope of glory. I cannot lose my salvation. Can I go stupid and act like an unsaved person? Absolutely. Jesus says, nobody or nothing will take you from my hand. Amen. So then, instead of trying to qualify, say, what is it that causes me to do A, B, C, or D, or think this way? And I guarantee it's hurt and pains and demonic influences. Jesus said, this is my blood in a new covenant. It's one sacrifice. Never need to be done again. So Lord, I thank you that your, your precious son has made me perfect and righteous forever and ever and ever. I believe it and Amen. I receive it by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. So, what do I do with this information? Well, first off, let's see what Jesus rebuked. I read all the scriptures where he rebuked anything. He rebuked the mountain. That's the law. 
He rebuked the fig tree, which is temple worship. <coughs> he rebuked the wind and the waves, which are things uh, that the enemy brings against you. That's a storm. He rebuked the devil. He rebuked unclean spirits, <laughs> and he rebuked John and James. When he rebuked Peter, he was really rebuking the devil who was walking through Peter. John and James came to Jesus and said, we went to this town, the Samaritan town, and they said they don't want you to come. Should we call down fire on them? Fire from heaven to just destroy the Samaritan city. And Jesus says, he rebuked him and says, you don't know what spirit you are. See, Jesus didn't come with the spirit of judgment. He came with the spirit of acceptance and restoration. Okay? So that is what he rebuked. Now, let's ask ourselves some questions. And if you're offended by any of them, I'm sorry. Do you truly trust the Lord? Can you grow in your trust? Yes. I'll show you where your trust can grow. Do I follow him or do you follow your wisdom? That's a hard one. You come to a place and you're saying, okay, it looks like I should do this, should do this, this is the answer, this is the answer. The Lord says, no, I want you to turn left. What? That makes absolutely no sense. Because if you can figure it out, you don't need God. That's right. It's always going to be something that you cannot do. Do I operate out of his authority? Or do I operate out of my authority, my ability, my mind, what I can figure out, what I can see, or what I think? Have I been delivered from all the monkeys that could have an influence on me on how I think and how I see? Is there something blocking me from receiving all that God has? I might be perfectly online, but there's so much static in me that I can't see it or grab it. Am I in denial about anything? I didn't like that one. I had to have that conversation with Heather a couple months ago. When your wife looks at you and says, yeah, I've been waiting for that one. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. So these are all questions you ask between you and God. Ask the Lord. Am I, am I really trusting you? And am I really following you? Do I really operate out of your authority? Have I been delivered from all the monkeys? And am I in denial about anything? In Matthew 13, 31, this is the scripture about your authority. Jesus put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven. The word kingdom in the Bible does not mean a physical kingdom. It means the authority to rule a kingdom. So when John the Baptist says, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand, that was the authority of heaven was coming. Who is the authority of heaven? Jesus. Jesus, which he gave to us. So after Jesus went up on the mountain, went through his trial, the dove came down upon him. From that moment forward, it says he went preaching the kingdom of heaven. He didn't preach the gospel. He preached the kingdom of heaven, which is the authority of heaven to bring down upon the earth. Amen. So when it says that Jesus has defeated the enemy, he has, and he's given that authority to you so you can defeat the enemy in your life and the life around you. The devil is not like locked in prison. He's out running around, but you have given authority to withstand him, rebuke him, and push back darkness. Yes. Yeah. You cannot be the kumbaya Christian. So he says, the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed. So the authority of heaven is like to a mustard seed, which a man takes and sows in his field, sows into your life. I'm going to take that mustard seed of faith in the authority that Jesus has given me, I'm going to plant it in me. It is the smallest of all seeds, but when it grows up, it is larger than any garden plant and becomes a tree, so that even the birds come and nest in it. So when you plant the authority of Jesus Christ that he's given you in your life 
and you start operating in it, it grows and it grows and it becomes the biggest thing in your life. Where when you walk, you're not timid, you're not scared, you're not beat down, you're not like, what am I going to do? You say, oh no, I'm going to speak to this situation. When Tom Barkey laid hands on my chest and prayed over me, I didn't go home and say, well, Heather, I wonder if it's going to work. Everything out of my mouth was, it's done. Amen. It's done. Amen. When we agreed that I had a new heart, four days in the hospital, waiting for them to do an angiogram. Every day, I got a new heart. The doctor would go to her and say, oh, he's jacked up. We're cracking him open like a coconut. And on the fourth day, I got the answer. He was flabbergasted. He says, there's nothing wrong with your heart. I cannot even see where there was ever a clogged artery. Mm -hmm. Thank you much. Can I get my clothes on now and go? $35,000 later to hear that I was okay. <laughs> Woo! What did we do? We even did that. We even did that. We, we said, okay, that's it. We're, we're. So we, we're self-employed. We're self, we're self pay. So we wrote a letter to the hospital. Said, look, this is how much money we make. This is what we're doing. We can't afford this kind of nonsense. I think the bill was $60,000. Dr. Bukowski was so ashamed that he didn't charge me any money for him being my doctor the four days in the hospital. Dr. Wilson, who was my regular doctor, did not charge me any money either. Jesus gave you a new heart. I said that. Yeah. I got a new heart. But then the hospital ended up paying the bill. <laughs> Sorry. Somebody. Emoji. What? Emoji. Emoji? Emoji. Okay. Did you take a picture? So my faith, when I use it and walk in it, it will grow. So the next time something happens, I'm quicker to say no in the name of Jesus. We're not having that. I'm sitting in the back of church. And all of a sudden, I get a pain through the side of my head like someone just stuck a dagger in it. And I go, oh, no, you slimy little monkey. I'm casting you out like all your little slimy brothers. I prayed in tongues for a few minutes, rebuked it, kicked it out. I feel fine. Almost good. I didn't run and get an aspirin. I didn't run to have to say, I don't know, I can breathe. It hurts really bad. No. Mm, not having it. No, you're not... You're not coming into my house anymore. Boom, get out of here. So when I understand my authority, when I understand who I am in Christ, I speak to the storms. I speak to that mountain of the law that keeps the devil keeps throwing at me. I speak to the religious uh, temple worship where I need to do everything correctly. I cast it into the sea. The last thing that Jesus said, or the first thing that Jesus said to his apostles before he ascended into heaven, he says, anybody who believes in me and is baptized will be saved. If you go look at Mark 16, verse 16, he says, anybody, what? You guys, why, why are you laughing? That wasn't funny. I had to sneeze, I'm sorry. You what? I had to sneeze. I had to sneeze? <laughs> Middle of my sermon. <laughs> Jesus says, he shows up to the apostles. There's 11 of them. He's going to ascend into heaven. He's given them the last word. This is going to be important, right? He says, everybody who believes in me and is baptized will be saved, and those who don't will be condemned. So how did you get saved? You believed and you were baptized in the Holy Spirit. And these will be the signs of those who are saved. These signs will follow those who are saved. What's the first thing he says? They will cast out demons in my name and speak in new tongues. Most churches in America don't believe in praying in tongues. And almost all churches don't believe in casting demons out. So the devil has got into the church, tweaked the theology where we don't even teach this in the church anymore. Or if anybody is operating in it, they've got it really wacky doing. and they've made it a circus. You know, it's almost two, two lines later where he says they'll, they'll heal the sick 
and preach the gospel. So in Jesus' final remark, he says, the most important thing you can do as a believer is cast out all the monkeys. Because the monkeys are distracting you, they're clouding your mind, they're clouding your judgment, they are strongholds, they are keeping you from being everything God wants you to be. They could be anger, they could be self-esteem, they could be uh, self-righteousness, it could be a religious spirit, it could be, I was hurt as a child and so now I walk around with an offense. Maybe I'm angry at God. There could be all kinds of different spirits operating in your life which are keeping you from being everything that God wants you to be. So then my question is, why would you want to keep them? You didn't know you could get rid of them. Now I understand that until we actually started walking in this, we never did anything with it. You don't think Christians can have them. I read a guy who has a deliverance ministry, and he's a denominational guy. And he started trying to describe that Christians can't be possessed, but non-Christians could be possessed. You know, in the, in the whole Greek text, in Aramaic, nowhere does it say the word possessed. It's demonized. It's one mm -hmm. word. It just means demons have influence in your life. Yeah. Now, some demons, some people have a lot of demonic influence. Some have a little bit. I had a zoo. There was a lot of critters in me. But we got rid of them. So, back to... I, I think this is really self-examination. Not to have guilt or shame. But I want you to have a serious conversation between you and, and Dad. Say, Dad, am I, am I missing something here? Am I, do I really trust you? And now trust is weird. Because you can have trust in this area... And no trust over here. Trust over here, but no trust over there. Two areas I got trust really quick, or they it's been developed was finances and healing. Money was money was like a curse around my head. Gosh, in and out, not enough, not enough this week. We got no money today. There's ten dollars in the bank. Oh, there's four thousand dollars in the bank. It's like, come, can we just like keep it at a steady amount? I hear chuckles from heaven. Do I follow him or do I ask him to come where I'm at and do what I need him to do? Do I operate out of his authority or am I still asking him for something? Tell me the Bible where Jesus asked the Father to heal anybody. And yet... Most of your prayers are probably still that. Lord, please heal me. That's an unbiblical prayer. I was talking to somebody the other day with a situation in, in, the, in, the, in the house and, and the person looked at me and says, the Holy Spirit better do something. And I'm going, holy, where did that come from? God is waiting for you to do it. He gave you the authority. He did that. That's right. So do I operate out of his authority? Or do I work it up? Do I got to pray for eight hours before church so I got the anointing? Mm -hmm. There were very, very, very anointed uh, ministries in the past that God put an anointing on them. They were healing all kinds of stuff. But their theology was monkey crazy. Just, I have to follow these 13 steps before I can go minister. And it was, it was like making him worthy for the anointing to fall on him. I sit in the back of the church and I said, Lord, speak through me. Let it be your words, not my words. Stifle my tongue so I don't go crazy and start doing something I'm not supposed to. And I say, I thank you for a fresh anointing. I thank you, Lord, that the church is anointed to receive Amen. all that you have. That's Amen. my prayer. Amen. Now, I, I like now, I, I didn't use, I used to sit in my office and play video games until church started, thinking I could do both. But I now come, I try to come out during praise and worship practice and sit in the back and just sit in that. I love the music. I love praise and worship. It just takes me to a nice place. 
And then I talked to Dad. Have I been delivered of all the monkeys? How many times have you prayed for me, Heather? Do you think? That I know of. How for many deli deliverances have deliverance? me and you have done personally together? About seven or eight. Seven or eight. Where there was manifestation. Sometimes I thought my lungs had come up out of my chest <laughs> when I was coughing. <coughs> Quick, that's my kidney. Get it back. I need it. <laughs> now, when I see something coming up in my life and I'm, a, I'm alone, like usually when I drive from the house to the office, I'll do self-deliverance in the truck. I'm saying, oh no, I renounce that. Get out of here. And there's, there's, there's a, a level of victory. But the scripture we stand on is one can cause a thousand to fly yeah. to ten thousand. So the very fact that we're doing it together multiplies the power and the deliverance. Yeah, right. And so I was explaining to somebody that the Lord showed me that your life is like a 50 gallon barrel. Yeah. And the day you were born, the devil starts pouring junk in there. You're hurt, you're pain, there's rejection. And so now the barrel's full. And you do some deliverance and the top stuff comes off. And then you go to the next layer. So there's nothing wrong with there being layers of deliverance. Absolutely. And so you should be really quick that when you see something, something comes up, you notice a habit or a thought or something in you that's, that's cattywampus. Okay, there's a monkey tied to that and I need to get him out. That's right. That's true. Am I in denial about anything? The Lord said the, the oldest stronghold in my life, besides rejection and hurt and pain, was going to eat to feel good. And he said that'll be the last one to go. Because it was the first one to come in. In my rejection, you know, grandma fed me cookies. You know. Or when I was 10 or 12, I had a paper route. And as soon as I collected my money, I drove down to Circle K, got my orange crush a comic book, and like three packages of Twinkies. So what was I doing? I was checking out fantasy in the comic books, and then I was gorging like a pig. That was all to make me feel good, but as soon as I was done, an hour later, I'm going, well, I need another Twinkie. See, the demonic stronghold of that came in at a very early age, and so I was talking to her the other day, and I said, am I, am I in denial about my eating? Because I'm thinking I'm like really over here in my scale it did like that. I think I went here in my scale like that. And she looked at me like only Heather can. <laughs> she smiled that loving smile and said, yes, you're in denial. <laughs> oh! <laughs> and so what did we do? We attacked it right then, didn't we? Come on, let's pray about it. Let's kick those monkeys out. There's no shame in monkey kicking. Hallelujah. The shame is when you hide because you think your self-esteem is something important. We get calls all the time. Can you do private? I don't want to be on the video. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm somebody important in, in this city or that city. It's like, oh, dear God. <laughs> Literally, a blessed sister said, I'm important in my city. Can we do it without the camera? <laughs> so your assignment this week is to answer those questions between you and God and if there's something skewed deal with it maybe it's something you need to deal with maybe it's something you deal with us and we help you deal with it Amen. but don't you want to be free of everything hallelujah yeah. Everything. Father, I thank you for the saints today. As we open up the front of the church to anybody who needs to come up for healing or deliverance, we thank you that your authority is here. We thank you that your presence is here. We thank you that you want to see your children free. Yes. We thank you that there is no guilt or shame in deliverance. Father, I thank you for all those who support the ministry. 
it's growing. I thank you for everybody who sows. I thank you for the dollars. I thank you for the thousands of dollars. Whatever it is they're sowing, I know it comes from their heart. And it's between you and them, not me. So I ask you to bless all the givers. Bless those who are not at a point yet to give. Bless those who don't understand the giving. Bless all your children. And we thank you for the offering, and we bless it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So if you want to sow, there's envelopes on the chairs. If you want to come up for ministry, now is the time, not an hour from now when everybody's left for that private time. Can I get some private time now, Lord? Hi, Janet. Uh, let me ask you a question. Are we friends? Are we buds? Are we like we are. We we're are, like Christians, we buds? Yeah. We, we got a good rapport. Yeah. You can take it and then you I give can it. Take it. Yeah. You give it. Okay. Did you learn anything today? Yes. Okay. So, if I'm going to pray for you, I'm touching God's authority, and I'm going to pray healing into you. Right. Right. What's your job? Receive it. Receive it. What if it doesn't manifest immediately? Um. I have an issue with performance, and so I feel like it has to, or you're going to think I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing. So now, so we need to kick out a religious spirit. We do. Okay. We do. There's Heather? also something sitting on my sternum. It has been, like, feels like a bruise, and I know it's something. Sorry. Okay. I'm not having a heart attack. Oh, no, no, no. We don't do heart attacks here. Okay, <laughs> Don't do it. Devil, I have to take this jacket. <laughs> See anointing up here. <laughs> okay. There. No performance based. I'm not obligated to do anything. Okay. okay. In deliverance, <laughs> I'm going to speak. They have to let go. Okay. So you thought deliverance, and then there's there's something around your your heart. Yeah. There's something constricting your heart. Okay? Any other health issues or things that you... Just that? Is there pain anywhere else? No. There's okay. a whole bucket. A the, bucket load? The tinnitus for like 30 some years and um, then the shoulder and heart pain. Okay. And the box is in my teeth. It's spirit of What would keep you from receiving it, do you think? Um, the religious spirit, I there think. Because I get up at night and I'm in pain and I, and I say the scriptures about, you know, do not forget all of his benefits. And I'm going, claiming my benefits. And I'm just doing all this. And I feel like, what do I have to do to get this? You're, you're doo-doo. You're doo-doo. Yeah. You're doing it. It's, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. So you're, you're, it's, it's, it's what we all did. It's what we all walked through. We had time in our life. But wait, I did all the right things. You know, I prayed really hard. I confessed all my sins. I, I went and got oil from the Crisco oil and put on my head, and I did everything. You're laughing. So we did a lot of this stuff thinking I need to do all this stuff. Mm. Do you know that you were loved? Amen. <laughs> yes. Amen. Is that a hard one for you? Yes. Okay. So it's a hard one when, when we've had a rough life or... We haven't been the poster child for Christianity in our own mind. That when God says, I love you, Janet, unconditionally, right. you go, That's right. What's up, Billard? What, what, what are you talking about? I don't trust you. Yeah. And so it's hard for us to receive love. Heather tells me, Larry, you just need to receive love. And I'm going, What is that? Because I had no reference point. My mom and dad never, ever, 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 ever said, I love you. My dad said it the day he dropped me off at the bus station going to the military. So now where's my reference point for somebody loves me? He bought me a bicycle. I thank you, Dad, for that. But I never had that. I, you know, I look at Heather every single day. I say how pretty she is. You know, I make jokes that embarrass her. I say I love you. Do I say I love you almost ten times a day? Do you think she has to wonder? I wonder if Larry really loves me. She's hearing it. And then my actions, I pray, are following up to where she goes, he loves me. So if you've never felt loved, that's probably there's still a rejection spirit. Yep. Then there's a religious spirit. Yep. 
and, and the unload, that they're all bundled together, okay? Yes. So you have to get out of your head, because you're a head person. Anybody who's been successful in a career field where there's a lot of book, I'm looking at you, no. where there's been a lot of book knowledge, where you've had to learn a lot of stuff, it's hard for you to just receive. Because you're used to going, well, it has to be ABC, ABC. Well, you know, how's this going to work? I always ask God, well, how's that going to happen? He says, just trust me. I told you I'm going to give you that. It's like, ah, how? Okay. So we're going to renounce some stuff. Okay. I renounce the spirit of rejection. I renounce the spirit of rejection. I renounce the spirit that I'm not loved. I renounce the spirit that I'm not loved. I renounce the spirit that I'm not worthy. I renounce the spirit that I'm not worthy. I renounce all religious spirits. I renounce all religious spirits. I renounce the spirit of self-reliance. The spirit of self-reliance. I renounce all spirits of inflammation. I renounce all spirits of inflammation. I renounce all spirits that are bringing sickness to my body. I renounce all spirits that are bringing sickness to my body. Mm. We're going to start there. There might be more. Okay. Yeah. In the name of Jesus, I detach my sister Janet from all those things she just renounced. And there's somebody behind you. Mm -hmm. So whatever the Lord touches you, I just I just feel there's going to be a touch right here, and you're going to feel you're going to feel a shock. So I've renounced, I've detached Janet from all those things, and now in the name of Jesus, I command every one of those spirits at the count of three to come out of her. One, two, three, come out in the name of Jesus. Every one of you spirits that we just spoke about, I renounce you and command you to come out of her right now in Jesus' name. You have no right. You have no authority. You've been kicked out. I want you to leave right now in Jesus' name. Oh, we're shocked. Get a shock? Uh, no, but I want to fall back. There's somebody behind you. You just don't, just don't think <laughs> about it. Just don't think about it. Just receive it. Okay, here I go. Are you sure you're there? <laughs> okay. <laughs> When, when we prayed three, over three, Mike, three. Mike didn't manifest anything. He just fell to the floor, and it was gone. So it doesn't always have to be coughing and spitting, okay? So if you keep feeling like you want to fall down, just fall down. We're going to throw a blanket over you and just go wherever you're going to go. Okay? Love you. Every spirit that's been renounced, you must come out. You have no right, and so we command you to leave her right now. And Father, I thank you, thank you that you're filling all those voids right now. That she is in the throne room with you, and she's receiving her healing in Jesus' name. Can demons come back? Absolutely. I swear I've kicked some demons out like two or three times. It's almost like we have a rapport. Like, oh, it's you again. Because you have to fill that void. Wherever that demon came out of it was rejection. You have to put, I'm, I, I am accepted. If it's a hurt and a pain, you have to put, I'm healed. There has to be something put in that place. Amen? <clears throat> Anything you're hearing? I love you. She's, she's receiving right now. It's, Amen. I know. I think this is like the most I've ever seen her receive. And I'm so blessed. Because God's doing it. It's the anointing. If we were all honest, anybody who's had some deliverance, they would say, I've had five, I've had six, I've had ten. It's not that it's not a one time shot. It's like it's like we're we're pulling weeds out of the garden. Okay? Anybody else? Need prayer for deliverance or healing. How did you find us? Come on, uh, on Facebook, I've been um, um, following you guys. And Tell us your name. Pastor Leon, John, 
Hi, I'm Joni Strong. Joni, Joni Strong. Now, she got out of her car today and she goes, <laughs> Hi, I'm Joni Strong. And I'm going, Ooh, that name's really familiar. And she's always on my post. She's on Heather's post. So <laughs> this is somebody who's been following us and they drove down from Highland or, or Beaumont or whatever and come to church today. What can I help you with today? So I've, um, and I'm an intercessor myself and I'm on the prayer chain and stuff. And just really support all of everything the Lord's doing. And that's why I love about you guys. But, right. but I mean, I've, I've had something um, where I can get an attack in the night. And but it's, it's, I mean, it's kind of a personal thing, but really it causes me to change. And, um, okay. and it's been like over a month I've been doing some natural things. But I'm praying and I'm doing warfare, cursing it and um, losing his spirit. and his power and um, and I I usually when I pray I mean I've seen God do so many miracles and for other people too and it's just like I'm just like Lord but you know just you know just pressing in and just doing everything that you know that I um, you know that I know to do and you know I mean and uh, you really you're fine you're fine you're fine um but just the night is just there's a couple things in deliverance that we don't want to talk in flight company and it's the hush hush stuff. If okay, think about my prior life. I'm, I'm, I'm teaching. I want you to know. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, you're going to say. I'm going to talk yeah, to them no, no, as go I'm ahead. Deal with Go this. ahead. Yeah. <laughs> In thy lifestyle that I had while I was doing drugs, who did I do the drugs with? The ladies I picked up on the street. So they were drug addicts. But they were all making their money by prostitution. And so that was who I hung out doing my drugs with. That doesn't mean I was doing things necessarily with them, but that's who I smoked dope with. Do you think there was a soul tie that came? Do you think that every girl that I had been with in my, in my young life when I thought I was a stud muffin at 20 to 30 years old, do you think there was a soul tie? So then how does the enemy attack you at night? A spirit spouse. A spirit lover. And you might go, but God, I, you know, it, it's, it's something that comes against you unbeknownst to you. It's not like you're inviting it. It comes. It comes. It's like when me and Heather got married, I would, I, we, we would cuddle in bed, and all of a sudden I'm having a video playing in my head of something I looked at when I was out doing the drugs. And you're horrified and you think you're some scummy, nasty person. It wasn't me. It was the enemy coming. I would cough and I would taste the crack cocaine in my mouth. When the dreams came, I smelled cigarette smoke in the room. We don't smoke. The neighbors don't smoke. So I, there's a spirit spouse of some type that's coming and attacking you. Okay. Something else, actually. Okay. Yeah. The devil will hate you. He, he will kill you no matter what you're doing. Okay. Unless there's something I don't know about. Oh, there's, there's lots of things that people don't realize. It's, it's, I didn't know that the scope and, and, and everything that was in me. Um, My mother would itch so she got scars in her arm. And she never did, she never had a drug life, she was, but she had giant rejection. And so I, I, I'm born and all of a sudden I've got rashes on my ankles, rashes in my armpits, and it was demonic. And the doctors at that time thought they just need to shoot it with radiation. So I got doses of radiation once a month for about five years. I think it killed everything in there. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So let's renounce the night terror. So uh, you're going to say, I renounce the night terror. I renounce the night terror and harassment. I renounce all of the attacks of the enemy. I renounce all attacks of the enemy. And Lord, I'm asking you to reveal anything that I need to 
see. Mm -hmm. In the name of Jesus, I. In the name of Jesus. I'm going to do this now. I'm going to attach my sister from those things that she renounced, and every demonic influence, every demonic spirit that's been tied to those, I command them to come out of her right now in Jesus' name. Yes, God. Come out of her right now. Yes, Lord. Yes. Come out of her right now. Yes. Every foul spirit come out of her. Every spirit that might be tied to unworthiness or rejection or hurt or pain or anything from the past, I command those to come out of her right now in Jesus' name. Any hidden things that have attached themselves to her, we cast those out right now too. Lying spirits, hiding spirits. All those things, we command them to come out of her right now in Jesus' name. And Lord, I just release total healing and restoration to her, total acceptance. I, I release your peace into her, that she's at peace, that there's no nervousness, there's no fear, that she just receives the peace of Jesus Christ. Just receive it right now in Jesus' name. thing for me was the things that I didn't know I was dealing with. You know, some of the things were obvious and then there was other things that like I had no clue. <laughs> Anybody else? Hi, Kelly. How are you? Prophetic Mama. Oh. Nice to hear. Nice gotten a pain in my heart and I was asking God, I was like, what is this? And he said, uh, it's a curse. And as soon as he did, I saw the lady who was cursing me. And as soon as she saw me, she backed off and the pain stopped for like a minute and then it came back. And I had like this stare down with her and told her away. Anyways, it's still, uh, they've been coming more again when that pain comes and, you know. Okay. So I'm going to have you stand in front of the chair. We're not going to have you fall down. If I could just move the blankets, please. One of the things that we deal with surprisingly a lot is witchcraft. That I didn't expect it to be there, but it's rampant. It's former generations, mother, mother-in-law, father-in-law, great-grandpa, you know, culture stuff. Okay. So if you're going to go blue. I'm going to just talk to Dad for a second. I'm going to do some renouncing. I renounce all spirits of rejection. I renounce all spirits of rejection. Unworthiness. Unworthiness. Fear of being alone. Fear of being alone. I renounce all witchcraft. I renounce all witchcraft. That has been spoken over me. That has been spoken over me. Or spoken at me. Or spoken at me. I'm going to make some declarations afterwards. In the name of Jesus, I detach Kelly from all the things that she just renounced. And I command every one of those spirits to come out of her right now. The spirit of witchcraft spoken over her, curses, beads, necklaces, charms, astral projection, anything that's been done, and every spirit of rejection, I'm all alone, unworthiness. I command them to come out of her right now in the name of Jesus. All you spirits must come out right now in the name of Jesus. Come out. You have no place in her life. And Lord... As they're coming out, I ask you to just fill every void with your acceptance and your love and your passion for her and restore all her gifts that you've given to her that she would flow in them and fulfill her calling right now in Jesus' name.
the stock. Can I just say that you're just saying your thing. We're gonna, we're gonna do something. Spirit, and just come right up out of her right now, right Jesus. Every one of you, every one of you, come out right now. You must leave right now. I curse you, I curse your plans. I curse you, and I curse your plans. And I command you to leave my mom right now. Get out. There's a lot of stuff going on that you guys don't see, but stuff is happening. I'm gonna let I'm gonna let her cook for a while. Anybody else? Yes, sir. Where are they On the very prayer. Joshua, 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 Joshua. Did you go to church as a kid? Catholicism? Catholic church? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Part of part of what you're dealing with is fear that they put in you that you've done some bad things. Yeah. in your life and they're going to catch up and bite you on the butt. <clears throat> all that stuff, once you're born again, you put faith in Christ, all that stuff is under the blood. Okay? So I'm, I'm going to say some things that we're going to detach and you just you mm -hmm. just say, I detach. You're going to just quote after me and then I'm going to cast them out. I'm going to do that by myself. Okay? So I renounce. You're going to say that I renounce, I renounce. All, spirits all spirits of fear, fear. condemnation, religion, religion, guilt, Shame, unworthiness, and hopelessness. I now detach my brother from all those things and every spirit that has come into his life through those things. I now command them to come out of him in Jesus' name. Every one of you spirits must come out of him right now. Right now, every one of you come out. Come out right now in Jesus' name. Come out right now. Every one of you must come out of him right now. You have no right. He's renounced you. You must come out now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, come out right now. You have no right here anymore. let God do what he needs to do right now, okay? Just, just stay in that place. You're receiving. Anybody else? By the way, you guys look good today. I, I can see a change in demeanor, a level. Okay. okay. Anger usually is based in rejection. And that can go back to mom and dad. If there's an absent father, an absent mother, if there's an emotionally absent mother or dad, if somehow there's been a violation, physical violation, sexual violation, or something. Anger comes in, and then you're angry at God. Why did you let it happen? Okay, so we don't need to know details. We just need to know that's how it comes in. Okay? So I'm going to ask you to renounce all anger. All anger towards God. All anger towards my parents. 
all anger towards myself. I renounce all worthiness. In the name of Jesus, I detach my sister from all those things she renounced. And every spirit that's been attached to those things, I command them to come out of her right now. Every one of those foul spirits must come out of her now. Get out. You have no place and you have no authority now. Come out of her. She has kicked you out. She has renounced you. And she is free of them right now in Jesus' name. And in the name of Jesus, I just release the acceptance and the peace of God. That you are his beloved daughter. That you are accepted. That you are loved. There's nothing wrong with you. You are perfect in his eyes, and he accepts you today, right now, as you are, in Jesus' name. Act of faith. I want you to say, I want all of you out. all of you out. And you just keep doing that, and you're going to feel some stuff. Okay? Anybody else? Yeah, faster. Faster. Yes, sir. Some physical. Okay. And it is getting better. Okay. 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 Uh -huh. yeah, I'm oh, I just we get we have residue from our former life, and, and sometimes it takes a minute to get rid of it. Father, right now I just speak into my brother. I speak healing into him. I curse every single spirit that's attached to him. I command every spirit of inflammation, every spirit of pain, every spirit of sickness to come out of him. I speak healing over his ankle, over his body, and I speak total healing and restoration to his throat, that there's no residue, that is totally restored. And I just pray over his mind, that he receives the mind of Christ, he understands who he is in Christ, he celebrates that, and he does not let the enemy come in and argue and fight or throw spears at him anymore in Jesus' name. We just declare that it's done right now, and he is totally healed in Jesus' name. Now, you just keep there that I am healed. No matter what manifests, I am healed, and it will manifest in your life. Amen? Thank you. Love you guys. Miss Kelly. He, uh, Rochester, how are you, buddy? Guy, he has a friend, Julie, that keeps coming and telling him to do things. And he's been doing something. Perverted acts. Yeah. Right. Just, it, he says that she lives in the Halloween house. Tell him about Julie. I told Julie. Yeah. Oh, let me. I. How, how did those things come in, Mom? Do you know how they come in? Um. Yeah, door open. Well, that whenever there's rejection or absence. Did you from my there. No. We sent your imaginary friends away. They have no more place in your house. Okay, this is this is all right. We're we're gonna we're just gonna he's in an A's and we're gonna we're gonna step in and you're gonna voice it. I renounce. You're gonna do this one. I renounce. I renounce all spirits. All spirits that have attacked my son. In rejection. In rejection. And he's all alone. Any form of perversion. Any form of perversion. And we command them to come off of him right now in Jesus' name. Yeah, we, yeah. we cast them out into the dry desert places, never to return. We curse every single one of them, and we declare from this moment forward that my son has the mind of Christ, and he is free of everything from the enemy. All the agitation, all the, the, the declarations of ADD or intentions, deficit, or whatever, we curse those spirits and command them to come off of him right now. And we speak peace over him right now in the name of Jesus. Every single one of them come out now in Jesus' name. There, there's some warfare in your house you're going to have to start doing. 
you have authority. You're going to have to start going and praying over beds, praying over stuff. Lord, show me anything that I need to get out of this house. Um, any traumatic experiences, anything that they've heard discussed about the other one, um, wipe that from their memory. You're going to have to do some some house cleaning. Okay. okay? And, and ask the Lord. He'll show you if there's any particular things you need to jump on. Okay? There was a couple cops. You know that? There was. Okay? Anybody else? Miss Rose? But I think I left it on your phone as a voicemail. But I prayed over you, and that moment, that dissolved. You need to change your mindset. See, I'm nothing wrong with you, Rose, but I listen to what we say. I'm trying to believe. I'm, I'm trying to get back to an old place. There is no old place to get back but to. I, I got to. I got back there. I, you never left it. Little... You never left it. Could be, but I sure didn't feel it. It was more, but it's feelings. It's feelings. And we, we're not going by feelings. Spiritually, you were always there. If your mind thought, well, I, you know, I'm, I don't there, I'm not feeling it. Get out of the feeling. Thing. Get out of the feeling and say, I know that I know that I know that I know it's done. It's gone. It's dissolved and it's not there anymore. And every lie of the enemy, I'm just not going to be militant. You, you need to be aggressive. I am not going to listen to it. I'm not going to try to get to a place. It's here. It's done. End of story. Done. And that's where we need to stand. Because it's almost like, I don't know what to say that. It's, it's done. It's already happened. You just go, look, thank you, Lord. It's done. Because your attack is here. The enemy is attacking. And so then you start doubting yourself. What are some of the strongholds that you have? Is a religious spirit or work spirit? So that is a bad memory. That's an old memory. That's a fallback. So when anything happens, what do I need to do? What do I need to do? I mean, you just heard. It's 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 what we it's what we run into is what do I need to do? What have I done wrong? What do I? It's like no, I just receive. So you were never out. That was a life on him. You've always been in, and he says it's already done. So you just receive. I know that's too simple. It's just it's done. That's your mindset. It's done. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. It's done. Because the minute you grab on that belief and say it's done, it's it's good. But we stay there. Yeah. Yeah. We stay there. I believe you will. Did I rebuke the thing in my head? 
I did, I, I've done it 20 times. But I got attacked with it this morning. It was attacked. It was an outside arrow that came in and just, it's a blinding pain behind this eye. And as soon as I curse it, it's gone. So when that doubt comes in or the pain comes in, you say, oh no, I'm not receiving it. I'm healed. Get off of me. You speak to it and you're commanded to leave. multi-layers from multi-facets things. Intellect. See, anybody who's smart, they get into the intellectual thing really easy. I mean, I was always trying to figure out how to chuck and jive and then get around the world. I said, no, just, just receive it. We're just, just, we're just going to do some fear. I renounce all fear. Childhood fear. Performance fear, fear of my father, fear of not being worthy, fear of making a mistake, fear of not being accepted. In the name of Jesus, I detach my sister Rose from all these things, and I command every one of those spirits to come out of her right now. In the name of Jesus, all you foul spirits, you lying spirits, she is totally at peace she knows who she is and every one of you must come out of her right now in Jesus name in the name of Jesus come out of her right now yeah no more place Sometimes it's tears, sometimes it's coughing, I mean, sometimes it's projectile vomiting, I mean, we prayed over somebody the other day and things came out that shouldn't have been there, shouldn't have been there, you know, and so everything is different. Sometimes I've just seen them just weep, and there's no, no coughing or whatever. So however it is, this is the biggest touch that you've received since I've known you. I like your head, George. Okay? Anybody else? Yes. It's after 12, so now the process is twice as much. So, so thank you. What can I do for you, girl? girl? Um, I have had, like, I've been praying that I wake up early, but then, like, at 5 a.m., I'll, like, wake up because of a bad dream. She keeps me in a lot of night terrors. Okay. Sit down. No, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say something. I want you to repeat it. Okay? I renounce, I renounce all night terrors, all night terrors. Every, spirit every spirit that attacks me in my sleep, every, every lying spirit that comes into my dreams, I renounce them now. I renounce fear. I renounce hopelessness. In the name of Jesus, I detach my sweet sister from all these things she renounced, and I command every one of these spirits to come out of her right now. The night terror to come off of her. You have no place. You have no right. We cast you out into the dry places never to return. You have no right in her house. You have no right in her dreams that she will sleep at night. We release the peace of Jesus into her that she'll only dream of Jesus. She will have no more nightmares and she'll sleep all night long until it's time for her to get up. We just declare that in Jesus' mighty name. I speak over her mind. That she's at peace of the situation that's going on in her house and her life. That she has no fear that she's going to trust God no matter what she sees or what she hears. And we just speak peace over this entire family. And that they are going to see the hand of God move on their behalf. We just declare it now in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. When you go to bed tonight, say, Holy Spirit, thank you for letting me sleep all night long. Okay. I know it's like to wake up at five o'clock in the morning or four o'clock in the morning. I like waking up. I, I am in a dead sleep and all of a sudden, bing, four o'clock in the morning. I am wide awake. Wide awake. Wide awake. Okay. Anybody else?
We good? Oh, hallelujah. Hi, sister. Hi. How are you? Good. You ready to get up? Yeah. Love you. Yeah, love you too. Father, we just thank you for your presence today. We thank you for what you have done and what you're doing. We just continue to speak blessings and favor over this congregation and the, the ministry here. And we thank you for what you're doing. Yes. And we embrace it now in Jesus' mighty name. The church said, Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Have a good week.